Hi world, Steph here with today's edition of Soil and Soul with Sacred Earth Essentials, where I believe the earth is sacred and you are too. So we are in our, our introduction to herbs here on the Soil and Soul series, where we are discussing the importance of cultivating both the soil of our earth and the soil of our souls. And without the earth, without topsoil, without aggregable land, we would not be able to have any of the plants and beautiful herbs and fruits and vegetables that we have. And without those things, we would all cease to exist. So the soil crisis is fairly important if you are at all concerned with continuing humanity and the proliferation of consciousness. So today, in the theme of the Nervines, we're going to be talking about oats, Avena sativa, both the milky oat tops that we have here. Ooh, look at that. That's so exciting to feel them in your hands. So when they are fresh on the tops of the plants, you would squeeze them really hard and then that's when the milk would come out. And they are very nutritive to pretty much the whole body, specifically the adrenal system, the cardiovascular system, and the nervous system, um, as well as I would say with the muscular, the muscular system in general. So one of the, we also have the oat straw here, which is also medicinal. It does not, does not exude the milk when squeezed, but the milky oat tops are where we get um, oat milk from, for example. And so what I did was I blended a tea with two of these, and so I will be straining and drinking that tea. And that tea is a plant that I should have been drinking regularly for years. It's very safe um, to drink daily. It's something that I gave to my son when he was younger and he still drinks oaky milk. O oat, oaky milk. Oat milk, oat top tea, oat milk, and also oat straw. And not only can you drink these in tea, you can also make tinctures out of them. And I would say you could even include them in elixirs, for example. It's a beloved plant. It's a supreme nervine and easy and simple to grow. When grown, they, they grow about three to four foot, feet tall and they can be planted. The seeds can be planted in the spring. They do take a lot of nitrogen from the soil, so it's recommended that oats be sown in soil alongside of nitrogen fixing legumes. For example, you could also use red clover, um, which also is medicinal. So you get to harvest both the oats and the red clover and then till them back into the soil to add to the tilt to the biomass and to the green matter of the soil. So what else do we want to know about oats? So their growing conditions. So they can help build soil when you use them as a cover crop and then till them back under. So not only are you getting the medicinal benefits of the fruits of the plant, um, not technically fruits, but theoretically speaking, the, the gift of the plant, what we would want from the fruition of it, and then it also functions as adding to the soil, both when grown with other plants as companion plants, as well as when grown by themselves. And so it grows best in well-drained loamy soil with good fertility. However, it's capable of growing in a variety of climates and soils. And then the yield is just dependent upon the particular climate. It's original place is in the fertile crescent alongside of cannabis, um, interestingly, as oats is considered a grain, a cereal, a cereal crop, and a livestock crop. 
and was essential, you know, to the development, the agricultural development of humanity. And then it moved from that region throughout the Middle East and over time to Europe, India, and the United States. The plant is in the Poaceae family. And not only can it be <clears throat> taken internally, and the benefits of eating oatmeal, for example, it also, that, that mucilaginous property that we see in the oaky milk tops helps to lubricate our entire body, specifically our nervous system by supporting, rejuvenating, rejuvenating healing the myelin sheath that coats the axons within the nervous system that allows for the electrical signals to pass through. And when the myelin sheath is damaged, the electrical signals, the communication system within the nervous system isn't functioning as properly. It'd be like if you've ever had a charge cord for your phone, this is <laughs> that somehow, you know, maybe a pet bit it, maybe it got stuck in the car door and there's that little bit of damage to the cord, right? And so your phone can still charge, but it doesn't quite charge all the way. And so, that myelin sheath, that protective coating on the axon, when it's damaged, the electrical signals, the communication throughout your body doesn't function at its um, optimal possibility, at its, at its optimal function, functionality. And so whenever we are taking in things like oats, which is one of those herbs that we can also say not only is medicinal, but can function as a food, um, we still also need to ensure that the rest of our diet is getting lined up. It's more of a circle um, with the things that nourish our body because many of the ailments that people are suffering from today, whether that be depression, anxiety, ADHD, trauma, fatigue, cancer, all kinds of different things can all be supported through a healthy lifestyle and through healthy food choices and supplements. Uh, again, this is a complement um, to work synergistically with allopathic medicine. Um, I think it's important to note that these plants have been around longer than your doctor, for example, and always check with your primary care physician and do your own research. I'm not a doctor, I'm not prescribing, um, diagnosing or treating, I'm merely educating and entertaining about some healthy choices that you can make both for your body, for your family, and for the community, including the soil of the community. Because as you're getting your medicine from these plants, you're also adding back to the topsoil, which if you listen to my previous videos, will be out of topsoil in less than a hundred years if we don't do something about it immediately like yesterday. So it's a self-fertile plant, it's wind pollinated, and I need to get a better phone, I'm getting a phone call, I'm making the video. Um, they, it prefers full sun and does best with adequate water. So a little bit more about the medicinal properties of oats. So one thing I think is interesting to mention is that phrase, you know, sowing your wild oats. And one of the reasons that that phrase came to be is because drinking milky oat, oat tea and oat straw tea helps to nourish your body on all levels, including your libido system and your reproductive system and your hormones. And whenever we're looking at herbs that are considered to be aphrodisiac herbs, it's important to first understand that before we reach some of those higher, more stimulating, popular, well-known aphrodisiac herbs, the key, the secret is actually in the adaptogenic herbs because to be at your full, you know, your full blossoming, your peak performance in those areas as well, love and intimacy and sexuality, it's essential to have your foundation your core health at its best as well. And so when we are able to ingest and incorporate things like 
milky oats and oat straw and even lavender from yesterday into our, our daily repertoire, we're building our immune system, our adaptogen system, we're nourishing all of our different organs, we're nourishing the myelin sheath, specifically with the, the our milk with the oats, you know, to help with that communication within our body. And then that allows for the full connection that that love and bliss on those levels, those ecstatic levels require. Because first, you know, our health is our greatest wealth. And when looking at, I'm talking about these subjects also, Valentine's Day is coming up. And this is a subject I also really enjoy, just talking about plants and people and their relationship between them. So just like within a relationship, if you were nurturing your relationship, like how we nurture the soil, you would want to bring your best ingredients to that soil, to that relationship. You want to bring your best self to that relationship because when you're bringing your best self, you know, you're, you're adding something better to the relationship <clears throat> as well as if you believe in sacred mirrors, the concept of that, you're also, you know, attracting better to yourself. And that's another reason why it's important to love oneself before entering a relationship. And when I say loving oneself, that doesn't just mean, you know, writing one love notes or buying one flowers or, you know, self-care doesn't always mean hot soaks in the tub and bonbons, um, one may say. But there's also discipline involved in self-care and self-love. And part of that discipline is being on a path to self-development and self-improvement. And that, that includes things like having compassion for oneself and an unconditional love and unconditional positive regard that understands that we're human and we err. But to err is divine, right? So learn from your mistakes and use them as compost. You know, use them like one would use the oats and the red clover at the end of the season, that you would take the medicine from it that it is offering to you, you would give it thanks, and then you would use the whole plant and till it back into the soil, adding to the soil in, prep in preparation for the season to come. Thank you, oats. And so, so oats, they are soothing, they're nutritive, they help aid in restoration, rejuvenation, regeneration. They are good for reducing inflammation, which is essential, and irritation, as well as um, they're popular for the use of helping to alleviate depression, severe anxiety, as well as, I know I'm missing one here, and exhaustion. They are famous for helping people to feel better and heal from being depleted and exhausted. And in today's, today's current culture, today's current world, it seems to me that most people that I come across are feeling that love, that exhaustion and that depletion on some level. And we can go to our doctors all we want, you know, when they have time with us in the present day, at least in the United States allopathic system. And I've never once had a doctor suggest to me lavender or taking milky oats or looking at the other things that we can do. If you need pharmaceutical pills, absolutely, you know, follow your doctor's orders. But the most empowering thing is to educate yourself and to make your own educated choices and also to see what works. You know, if you've tried a certain method, whatever it may be, for a long period of time um, and that method isn't working for you, then find ones that that do work for you and you can uh, my favorite way to, to take this is in a tea you can mix it with rose um, or talsi or some of the other options for mixing with this um, also you know lemon balm which we'll talk about soon on the nervine train and that being calm and treating your limbic system and your nervous nervous system is essential to being productive and bringing your best self to whatever you do and being successful at that because we make better choices out of a calm brain than when we are in 
the fight, flight, or freeze response. And after years and years of chronic stress, complex PTSD, a military PTSD, you know, police EMT PTSD, after years of stress and wear and tear on the body, we need to be making sure if you care about your health, that you are adding to your body just like we add to the soil. That when we're adding growing plants, we're fertilizing those plants, we're making sure those plants have the best ingredients possible. And sometimes we take better care of um, our plants or our kids or other people than we take care of ourselves. And for many years we've been collectively as a species, well, many of us, maybe not, not everybody, taking more from the earth than giving. And so now is a time of learning to rebalance that. So I hope that you enjoyed today's introduction to oats. And it, it's very good for like coding, coding the system and just nourishing. If I were to pick the first herb that comes to mind when I think of nourishing herb, it would definitely be oats. So I hope you enjoy drinking your milky oats and nourishing the myelin sheath and all of the different systems within your body that need nourishing and on a spiritual level on a soulful level when i think about this smooth sweet you know gentleness uh, that comes along with milky oats both when you think about you know the oats swaying in the breeze and rustling together as well as when you know you touch them and feel how soft they are. You know, even the straw, even <laughs> there's plants all over my house, even the straw um, is soft. It has like a silky texture to it. And so we can think about coating ourselves in that silky texture, that soothing, that motherly love texture of, of that we think about when we think of oats and milk and nourish our bodies, but also nourish our soul with that gentleness. You know, we live in such a harsh world where most of our interactions throughout the day, for many of us, maybe not all, are coded constantly in stress, um, caustic energy that drains and causes more harm than good. And so when we are cultivating a consciousness of compassion and peace, and growth mindset. We want to really incorporate both plants and people and practices into our daily routines to help to shift, you know, shift our trajectory, shift our health, and shift, shift the culture, really, in my opinion. All right, folks, love you all. Don't forget to be at peace and be a nutritive, delicious, silky smooth, a milky, delightful remedy for yourself and others and all you do. And the earth is sacred. You are too. Bye.